Welcome to this uh, NPTEL course on Advanced Reinforced Concrete Design. And now we are entering into the third uh, week of this uh, course. In this week, uh, we are going to talk about uh, durability aspects in reinforced concrete design. Uh, this uh, particular module in this week, we have broken them into four uh, parts. The first part, uh, we will uh, uh, talk about uh, basically the introduction to durability and what are the various different deterioration mechanisms that are there. Basically, they can be classified into four types, chemical, physical, mechanical, and corrosion effects. And then we'll also briefly talk about what are the current design approaches that we follow and uh, uh, code provisions for durable design. Actually, this is the the complete overview of what we are going to uh, discuss in this module. Uh, in this first part, we will talk about uh, basically the introduction to durability, why we should consider this in design properly. Right, so the expected learning outcomes from this uh, part of this uh, um, lecture is the student uh, should be able to explain the significance of uh, durability issues in concrete and uh, they should also be able to explain the different uh, transportation mechanisms in concrete and explain what are the different methods that are available to improve the durability per se. Right. right. So uh, we know that uh, concrete structures can deteriorate uh, prematurely uh, due to poor durability performance. But as a structural engineer, generally we are more concerned about strength, serviceability, and other limit states. But durability is also is one of the important criteria as a designer that we need to consider. For example, if you look at it uh, here, I am plotting a curve for two types of uh, construction. Uh, the one that is given in the blue, a light blue color is uh, for a good quality construction. And the another one is the B, which is the one that is done with improper construction. So in the x-axis, if you see the quality is there. Uh, sorry, in the y-axis, in the x-axis, we have time. We also have two things. Uh, basically, what we have here is the minimum performance that is given here. And also, what we have uh, here is the service life, the minimum service life, that particular structure that should be performing. For example, if it is a building, usually we design for about 50 years. If it is a bridge, usually we design it for about 100 years. Now, you can see that uh, any type of construction, they undergo uh, deterioration. For example, if you look at A, uh, you uh, tend to um, have this path that we are taking, right, the blue color curve, and then it degrades very slowly. And you can see that even at the time of service life, at the end of service life, it is able to have the performance which is more than what is minimum required. So the structure. Uh, is a durable structure. However, if you look at the another case, which is basically the, let's say if you take that as a, a poor quality construction, you see here there is a degradation and it can go below the minimum performance as well. So then it will not meet the service or, or, or the requirement, safety requirements. So we have to do some kind of intervention in the form of repair. Then again, the structure will undergo degradation. So if you are doing improper construction or if the quality of control is not good, then we end up doing repair multiple times. So uh, until the end of service life uh, to meet the minimum performance requirements. So it is essence, essential to ensure that the quality of construction is good so that we don't spend too much money on repairing. Right. So as I said, even for a good quality construction, it does undergo some level of deterioration. But as a as an engineer, we need to make sure that we design the system in such a way that you are going to get, uh, you, you are end up doing some minimum repair. Okay, so the durability issues cannot be fully prevented, uh, but it can be minimized or delayed by good practices. Right. So, what are the causes of uh, durability issues? Okay. The first of all, I think uh, for a design engineer, uh, generally uh, the understanding of deterioration process in concrete systems is very poor. And also, uh, though the mix design is done well and it is tested in the uh, lab conditions, but when it is uh, practiced in site, 
sometimes it may not translate very well whatever that we are uh, developing in the mix design uh, will not be implemented properly in the site and also for site uh, installed uh, concrete systems uh, we have to do some testing to make sure that they attain some minimum acceptance criteria so we do not have proper acceptance criteria for site concrete that is another reasons why structures uh, concrete structures undergo some durability issues another thing is the change in cement properties and construction practice also with time uh, uh, the curing and the way we construct also now everything is done in a very fast manner so sometimes the care may not be taken care uh, to ensure adequate level of performance right so these are the some of the pictures that what we have here you can see here that uh, this is a, one of the residential building you can see this all these balcony slabs have undergone severe corrosion and this is the bridge uh, pier and pier cap you can see the rebars are completely exposed and it has undergone severe degradation due to corrosion and these are some marine structures again marine structures are always exposed to chloride and moisture so they also undergo severe uh, corrosion and it is also essential to note that india has one of the long coastal lines so we have several uh, metropolitan cities that are located in the coastal line and they are all subjected to this kind of marine environment uh, so we need to be careful while designing to ensure that the structures are having adequate durability right right so what is durability durability of a structure is its ability to withstand its service life for the uh, particular service life for example for building 50 years for bridges 100 years or if you are looking at a historical structure or historical monument, sometimes the service life can be as high as 1000 years old, right? Uh, for a design life without significant deterioration or that should require very minimum maintenance. So that is what the definition of durability is. Now we are looking at the uh, concrete systems, okay? And there are some intrinsic and extrinsic factors and then environmental conditions. Basically the environment at which the structure is subject to, uh, is built and it is subject to a lot of environmental loads. So intrinsic factor in a concrete system, uh, you know, includes a type of cement that what we are using and what type of content that you have, chemical content that you have in your cement and how much that we are really using in our concrete and water to binder ratio and the quality of aggregates and the type of admixture that we are using. These are all intrinsic factor that will play a role in durability of concrete system. In addition to that, your mix design may be proper, but however, when you are executing it in the site, the mixing also should be proper. And we should also be able to place the concrete well and compact them well so that there are no voids and also they should be cured very well so that it attains uh, the mechanical properties and durability properties properly and environmental conditions we we can categorize them into two things physical aspects and chemical aspects so the physical deterioration aspects include abrasion erosion cavitation freeze and thaw and chemical deterioration aspects include corrosion that is predominantly uh, what happens to steel because we, we use steel as a reinforcement steel undergoes corrosion we'll talk about uh, what is that in the uh, coming parts of this lecture and uh, concrete undergoes also sulfate attack and alkali, alkali aggregate reaction so these are all chemical deteriorations now uh, both of this play a role as a structural engineer we know that we design uh, the structural components for loads we are very conversant with dead loads live loads earthquake loads and wind loads and so on similarly for durability a concrete system uh, at the material level and structure level also should be designed for environmental loads so environmental loads will include whatever that uh, deterioration that uh, the particular structure where it is being built will be subjected to so uh, both these factors will determine the durability of concrete so we need to be careful both the intrinsic and extrinsic factors of concrete system and also the loads the environmental loads that the particular structure or an element will be subjected to right so what is the definition of uh, durability as per is 456 if you look at it uh, the durable concrete performs satisfactorily in working environment during the anticipated exposure conditions and service okay so that means it should perform satisfactorily means it should not lead to strength or stiffness degradation and also it should not require too much of maintenance and as per ACI it defines the durability of concrete 
as its ability to resist weathering action, chemical attack, abrasion, or any other deterioration processes. And also, it should be able, able to regain its original form, quality, and serviceability when it is exposed to environment. So, this is what the definition of the two codes, uh, the IS 456 and uh, ACA. Now, let's look at it. I think this is uh, one of those things. As a structural engineer, usually we are very careful about improving the mechanical properties of the uh, material that we use for construction. Uh, for concrete, we usually specify what should be the grade of uh, concrete and what should be the minimum cement content, what should be the minimum water to binder ratio and so, forth, so on. We are mainly concerned about strength and stiffness because we designed for limit state of collapse and limit state of serviceability. So collapse means strength. For serviceability, the stiffness of the system should be adequate. This is what we are actually concerned about. But for improving the durability properties, we need to understand the uh, how the concrete will uh, uh, resist the deterioration that it is subjected to, uh, what kind of uh, deterioration mechanisms we will talk about that, and also how is it going to resist under the harsh environment that particular uh, building where it is being built, what it is being exposed to. So we need to design the concrete so that it has sufficient resistance to the harsh environment that it's subjected to and also it has uh, designed for tackling that particular deterioration, deterioration mechanism that it will be subjected to. So both of them we need to synergist synergistically we need to consider so that the structure will not only perform the strength uh, serviceability and also the durability will be good. Right. So there is a link between concrete durability and performance. Let's look at uh, some of the factors. So for structural design, uh, when we do the design, of course, the form work also, we need to be very careful. If the quality of form work is uh, not good, then again, you will have issues. And then the detailing of the reinforcement also should be very good. Otherwise, if you have bars that are closed, uh, very closely spaced, uh, then your aggregate cannot really get in. And then you will end up with uh, honeycombing uh, and voids in the concrete. Uh, similarly, at the material level, it is very important. To, we need to be very careful about what kind of concrete that we use. Uh, for example, if you are using, if you are building a structure that is uh, rich in sulphate uh, soil, that, for example, foundation that is uh, on the soil that is rich in sulphate, then you have to choose appropriate sulphate resisting cement. Similarly, reinforcement. Uh, sometimes now alternate forms of reinforcements are also available. So that also. Uh, we can use though it may be uh, uh, costly but uh, we have to be depending upon the situation sometimes we have to use coated rebars or uh, alternative reinforcement like uh, fiber reinforced polymer rebars that we discussed in the last lecture and again the most important thing is the execution so whatever that we are designing it using software and in trans that gets translated in the form of structural drawing but if it is not getting executed properly uh, then you know you will have a lot of durability issues so the execution is also very very important and finally the curing so what kind of curing regime that we are going to follow either you're going to do the uh, moisture curing or if you're let's say you're doing a precasting uh, applications in precast plants sometimes the steam curing is also possible All right so this is what uh, the effect of form work again if a form work is uh, uh, not good uh, you can see that for a bad form work you will end up with these kind of uh, uh, voids and then the surface may not be regular and usually uh, also at the surfaces we end up with high water cement ratio uh, and then the strength of the concrete at the surface will end up to be uh, low in quality but if you are following if you are using a good uh, form work uh, sometimes we also have these kind of formers like controlled permeability form so though they are costly but sometimes if you use it you will have you will end up with a very good uh, quality surface and uh, very in good impermeable concrete. Again, mixing, we have to be uh, careful. Nowadays, we use uh, high range water reducers and so on. And the gradation of the aggregate also should be good. Your mix, if it is too fluid, again, you will end up with problems like bleeding. And then if your mix is so uh, coarse, uh, and uh, then you will have segregation issues. So that also we need to be careful. And uh, again, the compaction also plays a major role. If you're uh, not compacting the concrete well, then you'll end up with these kind of uh, honeycombing uh, that will lead to impermeable concrete, sorry, permeable concrete where uh, the deleterious substances can enter the concrete and then it can lead to deterioration mechanisms. So, so this is a good finished concrete column you can see without any uh, honeycombing and the surface is also very small. 
so the compact sense also plays a role and in terms of uh, curing you can see uh, these are microscopic images of concrete uh, they were uh, cured the left one is cured using moisture curing and you can see a lot of these small 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 voids that you can see in this uh, microscopic image image but if you are doing a heat curing you can gain uh, strength and also the uh, the void presence is also relatively less compared to that of the specimen that is cured in moist curing so the curing also plays a major role of course in steam curing we should also be careful that the temperature is also not too high usually we limit it about uh, less than 70 degrees centigrade so this also plays a role right so depending upon all these factors the major factor that causes durability issues is the interconnectivity of the pores okay so this will play what kind of uh, pore and its distribution will come in the concrete and uh, that will uh, help in transportation process of uh, taking uh, moisture taking chlorides and sulfates uh, inside the concrete and it will aggravate the deterioration mechanism so the transportation process mainly depends upon how your uh, pores are there and how it is distributed whether they are interconnected or not that is will determine how fast this transportation process is going to happen so that can lead to again if you are not careful it can lead to concrete deterioration as well as reinforcement deterioration and uh, both of them both the concrete also uh, can undergo deterioration the reinforcement also undergo deterioration but generally uh, the reinforcement induced corrosion is a major issue uh, that we need to be very very careful about so this entire thing that de determines the durability of the durability performance of the concrete right so uh, concrete resistance in general you know uh, for example for flexural members even you know uh, if you lose a little bit of cover it is not really going to play a major role in your uh, resistance per se but if your uh, reinforcement starts losing its area due to corrosion uh, you, you, you you we know that we will talk about flexural design the reinforcement plays a major role in terms of uh, arresting the crack weight deflections and providing strength it plays a major role so uh, both of them will uh, depending upon how they are deteriorating it will affect both the resistance and the rigidity of the concrete system so resistance usually we deal in terms of uh, safety and then rigidity uh, leads to serviceability issues but they are all interconnected and uh, we will look at what kind of uh, deterioration mechanisms in the coming slides right so the performance indicates uh, uh, indicated by uh, how well we are controlling the concrete deterioration as well as reinforcement deterioration right so this is a very important aspect the pore structure of your concrete okay uh, now water or moisture is the most important factor that controls the various deterioration process if if, if we want to really have a good durable co concrete that's why most of the codes in fact they limit water cement ratio okay as you know 0 0.4 by 0.5 depending upon the exposure condition uh, so controlling the water or moisture is the most important factor for uh, tackling the deterioration process and improving the durability now the transport of water within the concrete again it, it, it is determined by what kind of pore that you have whether what kind of size of the pore that you have and where you have these pores uh, the pore whether it is in the gel or in the uh, capillary pore or it is a macro pore uh, you know uh, all these things will determine and the size and distribution so micro pores are usually classified uh, in the range of 1 nanometer to 40 nanometer and capillary pores are the pores which has size between 40 nanometer and 80 micrometer and macro pores are the one with between 80 micrometer and 10 millimeter and also cracks this is another thing that we need to be very careful especially when you are looking at a flexural member for example a reinforced concrete system in fact uh, we are allowed to have crack depending upon the exposure condition of course most of the time right so only what we do is we limit the crack width either 0.1 mm or 0.2 mm or 0.3 mm depending upon the exposure condition so the moment in serviceability stage you are allowing the crack then uh, the crack will create a passage for all the deleterious substances to enter and then uh, create a deterioration mechanism so you can see you can also have distributed pore like this there is no problem but however if these pores are interconnected then uh, the concrete becomes permeable okay so porosity is not an issue but if the pores are all interconnected then the concrete becomes permeable then like creates passage for 
uh, the moisture oxygen and other chlorides and sulfates to reach different uh, depths of concrete so this is one thing that we need to be careful about now let's look about look at uh, what are the pore size distribution in concrete so you see here uh, the size and uh, distribution of pores uh, they actually greatly influence the rate of ingress of deleterious elements through the cover creep uh, uh, we can see there are various sizes of particle that are there in the concrete you have calcium silicate hydride gels and the interparticle uh, spacing between these sheets is in the order of 0.001 micrometer to 1 nanometer it's very very small and capillary voids can be anywhere from 10 nanometer to almost 1000 uh, nanometer then you have entrained air bubbles sometimes to tackle freeze and thaw uh, we entrain air bubbles in the concrete that is actually good but uh, however we need to limit the size of these air bubbles and they should also be not connected together okay so their size ranges you can see from anywhere from 100 micrometer to almost about uh, one even close to that of 1 mm here what you can see right right so here uh, micro pores we classify them from size range from 1 nanometer to 40 nanometer and then capillary pores are the pores which are sizes ranging from 40 nanometer to 80 micrometer and the macro pores are the ones from 80 micrometer to 10 mm right so now usually the micro pores are not responsible for durability issues however the capillary and macro pores are predominantly responsible for the durability issues now uh, let's look at so that size of the pores also plays a major important another important aspect is you may have large distribution of pores but if you have interconnected pores then that leads to permeability and then it leads to faster uh, transportation mechanisms now let us look at what is transportation process so transportation is basically the movement of ions and fluids through the pores basically that what we talked about is basically capillary pores and the uh, macro pores now also the transportation of these aggressive agents because these all this most of the time the agents come from outside but sometimes if you are not careful with the mix design you will have other chemical compounds that will be there sitting in the inside the concrete and later it will get activated but most of the time you will have uh, external uh, uh, external entry of these things have to be prevented so the concrete cover how good your concrete cover that that will basically play a major role that is why if you look at most of the cover most of the pores depending upon the exposure conditions they will specify certain minimum cover thickness okay so the thickness of the cover and the structure of pores in the concrete cover will play a role uh, but unfortunately what will happen is most of the time when we uh, do concreting uh, during the compaction process there is a possibility of water entering to the top surface and also at the sides of the uh, forms you will end up with higher water cementation and you will end up with uh, the strength concrete strength in the cover will be usually it will be low so we need to be very careful and then environmental conditions the availability of water we said the moisture is a major uh, culprit that will lead to a lot of durability issues and also the temperature and pressure so these are environmental condition that will help in transportation of aggressive agents then the mechanisms we have uh, four uh, main different mechanisms diffusion is one of the mechanisms uh, that helps in transportation of this uh, deleterious substances then capillary absorption and then permeation and migration these are the four different mechanisms through which this uh, movement of ions and fluids that happens through the pores and it can reach different levels and it can lead to a lot of uh, uh, concrete as well as reinforcement deterioration right so we have talked about this uh, and this is again uh, you can uh, to illustrate the importance of uh, cover in durability performance and uh, uh, because most of the time the deleterious substances will enter through the outside uh, if your outside concrete is very dense and if it is not porous then it will not let these agents to enter and reach inside level of concrete so and uh, we know that uh, structural engineer we are uh, generally we are more worried about what happens to the quality of the uh, core concrete which is inside this for example in this uh, which is inside this stirrup we call that as a core concrete even for columns we talk about the strength of the core may majorly plays in the performance of the uh, strength and ductility performance of the column 
so we are generally we are more concerned about that that's why we allow the crack weights and also for bending when you look at it we generally we ignore the area that is below the uh, neutral axis uh, and we think that only concrete in compression if it is good it is going to help in strength but however from durability point of view whatever that the concrete that is around this core is going to play a major role in how good your uh, concrete is going to be performing from durability point of view okay now here you can see if you are doing a good quality cover crete then it will also act as a protective agent for this core con core concrete so uh, core concrete usually related to strength but cover crete is going to play a major role in durability now just to illustrate uh, what is the effect of concrete and how good the concrete cover if it is uh, going to help in uh, durability you can see here there is a figure that is shown here these were uh, uh, testing done uh, on some of the specimens that were put in this stackport platform and it is in uh, norway right so in extreme uh, weather conditions in the marine environment you can see that uh, what we are plotting here in the y axis is the chloride content in percentage by weight of dry concrete okay and in the x axis we are uh, putting concrete cover okay uh, from here for example when you look at it from this side let's say uh, let's say we are looking at this we are measuring this so this is your you know cover distance that's what we are saying so when deleterious substances are coming like this of course the outside surface you know it's going to have more uh, accessibility for the chloride ingress as you go uh, deeper and deeper the cover depth is going to increase then uh, the chloride has to reach a larger distance uh, to reach a particular level so that is what we are plotting here okay if you see here uh, we are looking at um, cases some specimens were coated with 3 mm epoxy so you see here so the green color one is the one that is coated with epoxy so basically on the outside surface of the specimen they have been coated with 3 mm epoxy so you can see here though they are in a very aggressive chloride environment but you can see that uh, at every uh, depth uh, from the edge of this cover where it is exposed to you can see here that the chloride concentration remains more or less the same right so that is what we are seeing here so that means the coating really helps in uh preventing the entry of this chloride uh, getting into the concrete and uh, this uh, another figure what we are saying is this is a chloride threshold value if it is going above this value uh, roughly it is about 0.15 percentage right so if it is going above the value then it is not good for your steel steel will start uh, uh, undergoing corrosion so which is not good so we want to limit it below this and uh, if you look at the specimens which is taken after 7 years you can clearly see that uh, at about 5 mm or so more chlorides are there as you go deeper and deeper inside the section you see that the percentage of chloride is getting reduced however with the increase in time if you look at this blue color okay compared to that of 7 years of course you are having more chlorides because you have exposed this concrete specimen for a more period of time so for a particular depth for example when i am looking at it at a 10 mm depth you can see at 10 mm depth so for a 10 mm depth you are looking at this right and similarly when you are looking at this is the level so this is the level that we are looking at for a, after 15 years for 10 mm cover and uh, for for 10 mm cover for after for after 7 years it is only less so as expected uh, with uh, after 7 years you have lesser chloride content at 10 mm cover but the same specimen after 15 years because you have allowed for more time for the chlorides to diffuse through so you have more content so as you go you can see that the chloride uh, amount of chloride content is going to reduce with increase in your depth of your cover so right so this is it clearly shows that sorry right so this is what we looked at it so you can clearly see that the coating helps in uh, creating a barrier that is going to prevent the entry of these chlorides 
uh, and as the time goes on of course chloride can reach higher levels okay so that is what we are looking at and if it is going beyond the threshold value then the corrosion will uh, uh, happen in a very uh, aggressive manner right so now let's look at the uh, different transportation mechanisms that uh, we have uh, talked about the first one is the absorption and uh, uh, absorption uh, of uh, let's say moisture or oxygen uh, you know it it happens with capillary action and uh, how do you ascertain uh, the capacity of the concrete is by doing this test called sorptivity test and what are the factors that influence the absorption the moisture gradient and capillary size and the capillary interconnection these are the factors that uh, affect uh, uh, the absorption of the uh, absorption mechanism right so the next one is a permeation mechanism so the permeation mechanism is basically it is a flow of ions and fluids under pressure gradient okay and uh, the factors that influence this mechanism is pressure the difference in the pressure and again the capillary size and how they are interconnected with each other and what kind of test method that we uh, do to ascertain this permeation is oxygen permeability test or torrent air permeability or gas permeability test these are the test method that we use to see whether the concrete is permeable or not next is the diffusion mechanisms again uh, diffusion uh, the mechanism happens because of flow through concentration gradient okay uh, like what we have seen in the previous case of the chloride ingress that uh, that that happens through diffusion mechanism and the factors that affect to this diffusion mechanism are concentration gradient the degree of reaction of the agent with the uh, hydrate structure and also the capillary size and their interconnection and our test methods we have uh, multiple methods that are available bulk diffusion method rapid chloride permeability method accelerated chloride migration method and the accelerated carbonation method these are the different methods that we uh, use for assessing the diffusion mechanism and the migration migration uh, mechanism is basically movement of ions uh, due to applied electric field so this is what uh, we apply in your uh, rcpt uh, test and that uh, what are the factors that affect these mechanism are concentration gradient the pressure difference and the capillary size so what are the different methods that are available rapid chloride permeability method accelerated chloride migration method chloride conductivity and vena resistivity method so these are the methods that we use to determine the uh, the migration mechanism that is happening in concrete right so now let's look at uh, what are the uh, methods so we have discussed uh, what is durability and uh, what uh, we have seen that the pores and the interconnectivity of the pores and the availability of moisture are the major factors that can that determines how durable that concrete is going to be and we also briefly talked about what are the four different mechanisms that usually help in this transport of ion and uh, ions and moisture uh, to help with the deterioration process now how do we improve the durability in we we'll look at it so first is the effect of water cement ratio so uh, if you have a very high water cement ratio so these are your uh, cement grains okay so if you have high water cement ratio so you will find that a lot of the space between the cement grains will be filled with your water and other substances and when it's hydrating and you will have these light color gray products are your hydration products as a hydration go on, we looked at it in the first uh, um uh, first module as well that size of the cement grain will come uh, start reducing and more and more calcium silicate hydrate gels will form and you see that uh, the space uh, is still you have a lot of uh, empty space that is between these uh, hydrated uh, cements but if you are using low water cement ratio uh, you can see that the space available between this hydrated cement particles are going to be less so so the voids are going to be less the interconnect so interconnectivity of the voids also will be less so this is one way for with low water cement ratio we can control the permeability of the uh, concrete and we can make the microstructure also more dense another thing is also using particles of different size so uh, again we have seen that uh, you know if you do the hydration you still end up with these kind of small spaces between these hydrated products but if i am able to use other particles like silica fume or fly ash which are of different sizes they will uh, they will go and occupy the volume of space between this uh, hydrated cement grains then it will also act as a nucleation agent to uh, have additional hydration 
In that way, I can reduce the porosity and permeability of the concrete. Right? So another way is to improve the durability is to use admixtures. So uh, why we uh, use admixtures? The admixtures are used to uh, influence certain properties of concrete. Okay, and uh, we have discussed in the first lecture also. We use both uh, mineral admixtures and chemical admixtures depending upon the need. And so we can use mineral admixtures. We can also use chemical admixtures. In addition to that, we can also uh, do a better, better particle packing uh, and uh, not predominantly use cement as a binder but uh, to use cement more as a binder but not as a filler and also if you are able to do the curing well then we end up with concrete which has a very good workability and has a very good strength and also it is going to be durable so durability again is is going to perform the strength as well as serviceability criteria for a very long term with very minimum maintenance right so what is the advantage of using this supplementary cementitious material okay and we have briefly discussed it in the first uh, lecture as well so uh, with use of this supplementary cementitious materials what we are seeing is uh, the pozzolanic reactions will occur when you have sufficient calcium hydro hydroxide from cement hydration is available so we have already seen that uh, in uh, Portland cement hydration, okay, you produce uh, tricalcium silicate and dicalcium silicate. Or uh, when it combines with water, you form calcium silicate hydrates. In addition to that, calcium hydroxide also, Portlandite also form, right? And uh, we have seen that uh, when you add these pozzolanic materials, if you have uh, amorphous silica that is present in this pozzolanic material, they can uh, react with calcium hydroxide that is coming from the primary uh, cement hydration and along with water they can form additional calcium silicate hydrates okay and we know that calcium silicate hydrates are the strength giving uh, element in your uh, concrete if you are able to generate more calcium silicate hydrate then you will get more denser microstructure and the voids are also going to be less so that that way using uh, supplementary cementation materials are really going to help in reducing the voids and permeability of the concrete right so this is uh, what again uh, the fly ash again if you are using a fly ash with a lot of uh, this amorphous uh, silica uh, or even with the slag we can improve the strength and durability of the concrete. So this is some experiment they have done uh, if you look at it uh, higher the diffusion coefficient more will be your uh, durability issues right. So you can see that there are three types of uh, specimens that were made uh, one with uh, Portland cement. Another one is concrete made with Portland cement and 30% of cement is replaced with slag and another concrete with uh, Portland cement but 40% of the cement is replaced with flash. So you can see here in the x-axis you have time in years and in the y-axis you have diffusion coefficient. So as I have told you higher the diffusion coefficient more will be your durability issue. So you can see here for a Portland cement, if you are looking at, let's say at the age of uh, 10 years, okay. So I am looking at this, 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 this location. So you see here for Portland cement, it is roughly, this is your uh, deficient coefficient. But the, for the same type of concrete, if I am using slag, 30% is slag, then you can see that the deficient coefficient has come down, okay. And similarly for fly ash also, 40% is fly ash, it is even less. So for a particular time, you can clearly see that addition of this uh, supplementary cementitious material, either like a slag or fly ash, helps in reducing this uh, deficient coefficient. So uh, people have done experiment and they have come up with these kind of uh, uh, measurement to see what are the deficient coefficient at any point of time, where time is given in years. And uh, okay, this should be e reference actually this should be p reference okay so so what is d of t d of t is basically deficient coefficient at any given time t and d reference is the deficient coefficient at the reference step for example let's say i'm taking reference time as 28 days so this is my reference value at any time which is after this 28 days i can calculate in terms of d of t if i know the d reference at 28 days okay uh, then this m is your uh, experimentally uh, uh, calibrated this empirical value 
and this is given as a percentage of fly ash or percentage of slag that you have it in your concrete system. So the whole idea is pozzolanic reactions produce more calcium silicate hydrates and it is going to reduce the voids and it is going to reduce the permeability. So your diffusion coefficient is going to be less. So that is what the idea is. Right. So this is another uh, example of showing again what is the uh, what happens when you start adding silica film. Okay. So silica film, as you can see, that it's a very very fine particle, and this is the figure that shows. You know, this is the scale for one micrometer, and you see a lot of particles, which is much much lesser than this one micrometer. Okay. So they're very very fine particles, and these are your cement grain. So uh, the moment you start uh, adding your silica film, again you can see that diffusion coefficient is plotted, uh, and in the x-axis we have silica film. That is added in different proportions. Okay, zero. Zero is basically a reference specimen. So for that, if I am calculating only with uh, uh, Portland cement, if I am taking, so this is going to be my diffusion coefficient, which is a reference value. The moment I start adding five, ten, fifteen, higher the amount of silica film, you can see that the, the ratio between diffusion coefficient of silica film added system to a diffusion coefficient of only Portland cement, you can see that. It is reducing almost at 10 percent. As you can see, that it has gone to only 20 percent. So that means almost we have reduced the diffusion by about 80 percent because it is a reference. It is right. It is one. But the moment I add 10 percent, the diffusion coefficient has come down to 0.2. So, uh, so we are able to produce more denser microstructure. In addition to that, we are also able to produce more calcium silicate hydrate. So that is why the diffusion coefficient is going to come down. That is going to help us in improving the strength and durability of the concrete. Right. So again, we can also add uh, uh, chemical admixtures to improve certain properties. Okay. For example, uh, if you want to have a more workable uh, concrete for a longer period of time, we can also add retorters so that we are able to compact and place the concrete well. Okay. Uh, sometimes, for in uh, cold uh, climate, uh, we may have to add accelerators. Uh, to reduce the setting time so that the concrete gains strength quickly uh, because you know in cold regions uh, the concrete may be subjected to freeze and thaw effect so that again we have to be very careful so to reduce it again sometimes we also need to add accelerators to uh, pass on the setting time and for very thin areas like this uh, for like this kind of shell kind of structure you can see that the exposed area is very very large for a particular volume of concrete and also uh, these are very thin elements, so it can undergo a lot of shrinkage cracking. So to reduce the shrinkage cracking, we can also add shrinkage reducing agents. And uh, nowadays in the modern concrete, especially when you are getting concrete from your uh, RMC supplier, uh, most of the time they do add super plasticizer uh, to optimize the mix design. And when you have very heavy reinforcement and congested reinforcements, we add super plasticizers to increase the flow volatility of the concrete. And also with low water cementation, we can achieve a workable concrete. So that is one thing. And this is another important thing that we add, which is an air entraining agent, uh, uh, predominantly for uh, concreting that is done under uh, uh, subjected to cold climate. Uh, what uh, we will talk about this freeze and thaw effect, uh, which will create a lot of cracking to reduce this effect of this freeze and thaw effect. Sometimes what we do, we add these air entraining agents and we create these voids in the system. Though initially I told uh, the more the voids and more interconnected the pores, you are going to have more durability issues. But however, here we are adding air entraining agent to create voids, pores, uh, but they are not going to be connected. So you can see these voids will be uh, discrete, pores will be created and uh, they will not be interconnected. So you add a very small uh, percentage of voids in the concrete to tackle the freeze and thaw. We will talk about that in the coming slides. Sometimes to tackle corrosion, for example, structures that are built in marine environment, which will be subject to chloride and uh, uh, other uh, deterioration mechanisms. So we can also add this corrosion inhibitor that will act like a, uh, a layer that will basically prevent or delay the corrosion process. So corrosion inhibitors also some admixtures that we add to the concrete. Right. So with this, uh, in this part of the module, uh, 
uh, basically we want i wanted to give a very brief overview of durability issues in uh, concrete system and so we discussed the importance of durability issues in reinforced concrete and also uh, as a structural engineer i said we are more particular about uh, strength serviceability and ductility of the uh, design right uh, however uh, now uh, we should also make sure that the structures are durable so that with very minimum maintenance uh, you can satisfy the design requirements for the entire service life so the durability is also important so durability on structural performance effect of durability on structural performance was discussed and we also briefly talked about different transportation mechanisms that are there uh, and we also talked about uh, methods of improving the uh, durability particularly uh, we need to have lower water cement ratio and we can add uh, mineral admixtures and depending upon the situations we can also add chemical admixtures uh, to improve the durability of the concrete so this is what we briefly discussed right so uh, we will continue the discussions in the next uh, part of the module and these are some of the uh, references um, you can see and i also taken some materials from nptel course offered by professor manu santana of iit madras and also um, the course offered by professor radha krishna pillai uh, if you want more detailed information you can also look at their lectures uh, here the idea is on uh, advanced reinforced concrete design but however uh, some overview on durability issues uh, have to be given so uh, briefly we discussed in the coming modules we will also talk about different deterioration mechanisms right so thank you i'll see you in the next part